Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, June 21st, 2020. I ask that you download a copy of our bulletin for today's service. That can be found on our website, www.centralprespb.com. At the top, you'll find a publications link. If you click there and scroll down, you'll find today's date, and that's where you can find our bulletin. You can also find a direct link to the bulletin in the description under this video on our website's front page, on Facebook's video, and on our YouTube video. Um, once you have your bulletin, I ask that you turn your attention to the announcements found on the back of that bulletin. We will continue with online worship services throughout the month of June. Uh, the session will be looking at whether or not we should reopen for the month of July uh, when we get a little bit closer to that time. The Presbytery of Arkansas has canceled both summer youth trips, uh, but the Synod of the Sun is offering an online youth workshop July 13th through 17th. Registration is free and will include a free t-shirt. The Presbytery of Arkansas is also offering to cover the $100 cost of Montreat at Home, which is happening from July 20th through the 24th. Both events will take place online and is for rising ninth graders to graduated seniors and interested adult leaders. If you have interested youth, you can contact us uh, through our social media channels, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Um, look for the username Central Prez PB, and I will get you in contact with those who will help you get registered. Uh, the PCUSA General Assembly is taking place virtually. Um, the initial uh, night was on Friday night. Uh, last night, they elected uh, co-moderators. Um, unfortunately for us uh, right now, uh, I recorded this video before that, um, that vote was taken, so I don't have any news for you there. But the good news is that you can catch up on all the happenings and watch the um, continuing uh, virtual assembly uh, that will take place on June 26th and 27th. For all the news and for uh, links to the future videos, you can go to their website, www.ga-pcusa.org. Uh, finally, archives of our online services can be found online uh, at Facebook and YouTube. Links to both of uh, those pages are found on our website, as I said before, centralprespb.com. Let us prepare to worship the Lord. You are my God. Be gracious to me. O Lord, for you I cry all day long. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. Let us worship God. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us confess with confidence and draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us ask God to forgive us, first in unison using the prayer printed in the bulletin, and then silently. Gracious God, we know Christ died for, to free us from sin and to free us for obedience, but we have failed to live in that knowledge. In many ways, Lord, we have denied you. To those who seek your help, you grant strength and salvation, yet we strive to do for ourselves. To those who lift their hearts, you bend low, yet we forget and fail to call on you. To those who die in faith, you bestow new life, yet we cling to what is safe and continue to sin. Lord, forgive our lack of gratitude, our neglect of your good gifts, our selfish living. Bind us to you, that we might live for you. And now silently. Amen. As people born of water and the Spirit, we have died to the old life and a new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us day by day. Come to the water and remember your baptism. Be thankful 
and live as one who has been raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Good morning, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading this morning comes from the 21st chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning with the 8th verse and proceeding through verse 21. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on that day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son, but God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot, for she said, do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. And our second reading this morning comes from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning with the 24th verse and proceeding through verse 29. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. 
Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is read and proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we may believe, that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, author of the book, The Power of Positive Thinking, once wrote of an experience he had while walking along the narrow streets of Hong Kong. He came upon a, a, a tattoo parlor and stopped to look at the display of all the different things that could be permanently etched into the skin of a willing subject. There were all the usual and expected images, flags, slogans, anchors, daggers, skulls and crossbones, mermaids, animals, and the like. But one in particular caught his eye. It was a tattoo consisting solely of three words, born to lose. This phrase intrigued Dr. Peel, so he went inside and asked the tattoo artist if anyone had ever had that message tattooed on their skin, to which the elderly man replied, oh yes. But why in the world would anyone want such an inscription permanently etched into their skin, Dr. Peel wondered aloud. The old man just shrugged his shoulders and said, before the tattoo is on the chest, it is on the mind. In other words, the one likely to have born to lose tattooed on the body already thinks that about himself or herself. Now, obviously the man who devoted so much of his time and energy to getting others to think more positively about themselves, use this little story to help infuse a sense of value and worth in people. That's a noble calling as anyone who has ever struggled with issues of poor self-image or low self-esteem can attest. Too many people walk through life thinking that they are worthless that they do not deserve to be loved, that they matter to absolutely no one. Too many people in this country have been made to feel that way because of racism, because of oppression and injustice. Whether we've been forced to feel that way or chosen to feel that way, I believe those feelings are summarized by one of the characters in T.S. Eliot, uh, Eliot's play, The Cocktail Party, who says, I am obsessed by the thought of my own insignificance. But the trouble with such thinking is that the more ingrained it is, the more shallow our lives become. If we matter to no one, then we might as well get what we can get out of life now. Embrace happiness such as it is, where it may be found. And look out for ourselves because obviously no one else will. And suddenly, life becomes about how many things we can acquire, how much wealth we can amass, how perfect our public image appears. George Orwell, author of Animal Farm in 1984, 
once performed a simple surgical procedure on a wasp. The wasp was enjoying some jam that had been left on Orwell's plate when the author picked up his knife and proceeded to cut the wasp in half. And he watched in amazement as the wasp, completely unaffected by this, continued to suck on the jam. Only when it attempted to fly away did the wasp discover that it had sustained a lethal wound. And I make mention of this because of what this experience led Orwell to conclude. He observed that many people live like that truncated wasp. Existence comes down to little more than sucking jam. Roots are close to the surface. Lives lack depth. There is no deep sense of purpose that pervades our days. We merely get by and make do. Blaise Pascal called such a shallow lifestyle licking the earth. Born to lose. Obsessed with the thoughts of our own insignificance. Sucking jam, merely getting by and making do. Licking the earth. What a sad comment on the state of humanity. A humanity created in the image of God. A humanity loved and valued by God. A humanity who lives and moves and has its being in God. I thought a great deal about these things this past week as I wrestled with this morning's readings from Scripture. Hagar and Ishmael are cast off as easily and unceremoniously as yesterday's garbage. The followers of Jesus must come to grips with the fact that opposition and persecution cannot be avoided because our Lord himself did not avoid them. As our Lord put it, a disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? And I must confess that on the surface, I could not imagine two bleaker, more depressing, uninspiring, or difficult passages in the Bible to consider for a sermon. And I must confess that I was sorely tempted to choose some different texts, some that were easier, more inspiring, and less depressing. But then I, very, I remember two very important things. First, I've been, proclaim, been called to proclaim God's word, not my word. Little wonder that every time my mind began to wander to other passages in the Bible, God kept moving me back to the texts before us. Clearly, there was something more to these passages that God wanted me to consider. The second very important thing I remembered was that there is indeed a wideness in God's mercy. Try as I might, I could not get the tune of that hymn out of my mind all week. I found myself humming it in the shower or at the grocery store, or in my journeys to and fro. I found myself drawn to its words, contemplating them in my quieter moments, incorporating them in my times of prayer. For the love of God is broader than the measures of the mind. Over and over again, those words surfaced and resurfaced in my thoughts until with open heart and eyes, I began to glimpse what it was that God was revealing in these particular scripture passages this morning. The love of God is broader than the measures of the mind. 
it boggles the mind to contemplate God's love. It staggers the imagination to consider that God's love would lead to the shame and degradation of the cross. It's awe-inspiring to think about the fact that God is so mindful of each one of us that God knows the number of hairs on each of our heads. The love of God is broader than the measures of the mind. Consider Hagar and Ishmael. Ishmael's very existence was due to the fact that Sarah and Abraham could not fathom a time when God would follow through on the promise that they would bear a child. And so Sarah had given her slave girl Hagar to Abraham so that he might father a child through her. Now this was not God's plan. And now that Isaac has been born to Sarah, she still cannot see beyond the measures of her mind. She operates out of fear, a fear that there will not be enough of God's grace and favor to go around, a fear that Ishmael, as Abraham's older son, will receive all that she hopes and desires for Isaac. So she wants to be rid of Ishmael, who is now seen as a real threat to Isaac's future. And in a twist that we do not expect, God's love is shown to be broader than the measures of the mind again. Yes, the covenant will pass through Isaac, but God does not forget Ishmael, whose very name means God hears. God, because of God's great love and faithfulness to Abraham, makes a great nation of Ishmael as well. It would have been easier, much easier, to let Hagar and Ishmael die, but God said in no uncertain terms that God's love was big enough to extend to Ishmael and his descendants. Why is that important? Because the descendants of Ishmael are the Arabic Muslims who are often at odds with Israel. The love of God is broader than the measures of the mind. And where God's love is concerned, we are always asked to broaden our minds and to extend that same love to others, even and especially when those others are the very people we would deem undesirable, unacceptable, or unworthy. God does not look at any of us and says and say, I could never or would never love someone like that. God refuses to be limited by our own prejudices and fears. God refuses to let others define who and who will not be recipients of God's mercy. Because the love of God is broader than the measures of the mind. Little wonder that David would say in the 139th Psalm in words that could easily apply to each and every person under the sun, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Yes. God knows us better than we know ourselves, and God's love for us knows no bounds. That great and good news, which was once only whispered, is now to be proclaimed from the housetops, and it is our privilege and responsibility to do that proclaiming. But in spite of our message of love, our Lord tells us that we will be hated 
And in spite of all we do to bear witness to God, we will be called devils. Moreover, we will find the message of God's love will in fact divide families and bring about strife and contention. And that's all a bit much to swallow for all of us who confess Jesus to be the Prince of Peace. One cannot help but wonder how a message of love can be so opposed. But again, we must go back to the fact that a disciple is not above the teacher. How could Jesus' message of love have been so opposed? Years ago, a film called Parable was produced, which depicted Jesus as a clown in a circus. And this clown went about freeing people from various bonds of oppression. He acted out of a sense of compassion and justice. He helped a weary roustabout water his elephant sat in for a black man in a dunking booth while an angry man threw baseballs at him. And he rescued a pretty girl from an evil magician. All those who had a vested interest in maintaining the way things were opposed the clown and grew to hate him more and more. Then the clown broke up the puppet show in which the puppet master used real people as his marionettes. And in the climax of the movie, the clown gets into one of the harnesses on which the marionettes had been, had been just moments before. And as he is hoisted into the air, the magician stabs him. A racist throws baseballs at him. He's beaten by an irate sideshow barker, and the cries of the clown pierce the air as he suffers and dies. All of that happened because the clown's love for others would not allow for keeping others in bondage. A very important message for us to remember in this day and age, where protests continue to raise attention to the fact that black lives matter, that brown lives matter, that every one of us is a valued and treasured creation of God. And how we treat one another matters. Jesus opposed all forces of injustice which is why all who faithfully bear his name are supposed to do the same. Because the love of God continues to challenge any and all systems, institutions, and governments which dehumanize anyone created in God's image, which devalue what God considers to be priceless, and which lead us all to settle for a shallow existence instead of living up to our high calling as stewards of God's very good creation. The love of God is broader than the measures of the mind, and for all who have a vested interest in exploiting narrowness of mind, then that love will always be seen as a threat. But, and here is where the love of God proves to be broader than the measures of the mind and where so many in the church have problems with that love themselves. God does not return that hatred with hatred. Instead, God loves those who hate all the more. And God calls us to do the same. May God indeed grant us that grace to do so and to embrace and be embraced by that love, which is broader than the measures of our minds. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, it is now time to return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and our offerings. Again, this week we'll be taking that offering through electronically. Uh, if you head to our website, www.centralprespb.com, at the top of the webpage you'll find a Donate Now link. Um, please click that and give generously. If you prefer, you may mail a check into the church uh, using our mailing address, 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. So, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when, at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys and concerns, if there are any. If you have any uh, prayer concerns that you'd like to send to the church and have recognized here during the next week's worship service, uh, please feel free to contact us via our social media channels, uh, username Central Press PB. Uh, we had several um, prayer requests come through that and through our um, Facebook uh, chat group. Um, I'd like to pass along a, a sad note to begin, um, but a, a warm wishes to Mr. Andy Matlock, um, we were notified on Saturday morning by his daughter that he has moved to Memphis to be closer to his children and his grandchildren. Um, we know Mr. Andy has spoke many times of his love and affection for his children and his grandchildren in the Memphis area, uh, spending many weekends with them, um, missing our services. <laughs> and uh, But we uh, wish Mr. Matlock all the best and we will miss him terribly uh, going into the future. Um, we also have uh, a prayer request for Jessica Munn. Uh, she's going to be doing a stress test on Monday. Um, so we pray that uh, she gets good results from that stress test. Uh, we also um, hold the Suzanne uh, Holthoff family in our prayers. Uh, Ms. Holthoff passed away uh, this past week, and we were notified by Ms. Linda Vick to please hold her family in our prayers. Um, we also continue to pray for... Uh, Briley Von Tunglin, uh, Kara Taylor, and Thomas Porter, all who are going through various uh, medical difficulties. Um, I'm, I personally am asking for prayer for the uh, Burton family of Caddo Valley. Um, Donna Burton, um, who was my father's cousin, uh, passed away uh, from complications from a medical um, issue um, and was uh, laid to rest uh, Saturday. Um, I got to take uh, some time and, and, and attend the funeral and see some family members who I hadn't seen in, in, in longer than I should have. And, um, and I asked for prayer as they uh, grieved the loss of, of their mother and grandmother and great-grandmother and wife. Um, the Burton family will definitely need your prayers in the coming days. Also, I'm also asking for prayer for us, uh, the Cosmer family. Uh, we have officially sold our house here in Pine Bluff. Uh, no need to worry, though. We are actually uh, planning on moving somewhere in the Whitehall area. Uh, we are, uh, in the next coming weeks, we'll be closing on a house in Whitehall. So if you continue to keep uh, our family in your prayers as we go through this transition period, we would uh, greatly appreciate it. Um, we also want to take a moment to continue to keep those who are on the front lines of the uh, COVID 
uh, crisis, pandemic, and our prayers, the doctors and nurses, uh, we know that they are uh, getting bombarded more and more these days uh, with the spread of the virus ramping up. Uh, we want to keep those frontline responders in our prayers. Uh, also, those who are dealing with the public uh, as businesses are reopening, we want to continue to keep those people in our prayers. Uh, we also want to continue to keep our, um, our nation in our prayers as we go through this time of self-reflection and um, examination uh, with all of the things that are going on in our nation um, with the COVID and with um, all the civil unrest that is happening in America. We want to continue to keep our country in our prayers. Um, with all that being said, uh, let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. We ask that you hold Brad Von Tunglen, Kara Taylor, and Thomas Porter in your, in your keeping, and we pray that you bless them with recovery from their medical ailments. We ask that you keep the Holtoff family and the Burton family uh, in your caring as they grieve the loss of loved ones these last few days. We also ask that you give Jessica a good report for her uh, test that are coming up in the coming days. We ask that you keep Mr. Andy Matlock and his family in your keeping as uh, he has made the move to Memphis to be closer to his family. Please keep our congregation in your, in your keeping uh, for we will miss uh, Mr. Matlock terribly in the coming days and we will miss his smile and his joyous laughter and enthusiasm that he brought to our church and to our congregation. We also ask for prayer for, I mean, for caring for our, the Cosner family as we go through this transitional time of moving. We also ask that you keep in caring our nation and keep uh, caring those who are dealing with the, the COVID-19 crisis, uh, those who are on the front lines, those who are dealing with <clears throat> who are actually ill with the disease and the families who have lost loved ones these last few months. Uh, we also again ask you for prayers for our nation during this time of self-reflection and self-discovery that we make the right decision and use your, your decisions and use your wisdom to guide our actions in the coming days. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.